Hey folks, and welcome back to another ESEA Consolidated Application video. In this video, we'll be going over the ranking distribution page. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, and now that we're back over on our Grants for Me application page, we can see at the top here in the red text that we are over on the test site, so we're not impacting anybody on live. And a big shout out to our friend Don over at Blue Hill for allowing us to use their district for this training. So let's go ahead and scroll down to that Title I section yet again. We're gonna to go to the rank and distribution page. All right, and on this page, there are a couple things that districts can do. So the first and foremost thing that we're looking to, for folks to do is to put in their enrollment numbers for all of their schools and then their low income students. And the low income student data uh, can come from any of these. So it could be the free lunch kids, the free and reduced, the CEP or the CEP plus multiplier. So once these, the data has been put in, so I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. So say there's hundred kids at Adam school and 30 of those kids are low income. They have now met the eligibility requirements. Oh, yep, okay. All right, now that we're over on the ranking distribution page, there's a couple of things that we need folks to do. The first thing is to put in the enrollment numbers and the low-income student numbers for all of their schools. So when you put in the low-income student data, you'd have to choose which data set that you're gonna be looking at. Please note that the date of the data has to be the same across all schools. So you can't choose October 1 data, you know, for the first two schools and then April data for the next school. Um, and then say a June data or a, a January data, I'm just making dates up at this point, um, but it has to be th the same date. So it has to be the same data collection. Um, and then one thing that districts can do is they can rank the schools based on their grade span. So in this case, we have all uh, PK-8 schools. And so if you had some other schools, say you had a PK-2 and then you had a um, three, five, and you had a six, eight, and a nine, 12, you could say that your grade span one could be pre-K five, and then you would group those first two schools, and then you put your six, eight into a separate um, ranking, and then your nine, 12, and then in another ranking. There is some eligibility by other factors. So if you have one school per grade span, then automatically all schools are eligible. So if you have, you know, one pre-K five, one six eight, one nine twelve, everyone is eligible. If your district has less than a thousand total students enrolled, not just enrolled at the Title I schools, but enrolled all together, then all schools would be eligible. And that ranking distribution does not apply. If you fall into the category where you are now grandfathered. So that means if a school say um, had 100 kids and only 15 were eligible, so that means the poverty level is 15%. That is below the threshold in order to be eligible by itself. Um, as long as it was eligible and not grandfathered the previous year, they would be eligible for a grandfathered year. So it kind of helps them you know, in the event that A, this was a hiccup or B, um, you know, kind of a, a step down process where yes, you know you're eligible this year, but it might not last moving into the next year. All right, um, let's see. There's a couple other ones on here, the feeder pattern and the greater than grade span average. So again, if you have any questions on those, you can reach out to your ESA regional program manager. Um, otherwise, that is ranking distribution in a nutshell. So remember, put in your enrollment, low income data, um, make sure you either do it based on ranking or you do it based on poverty. And as always, if you have any questions, reach out to your ESEA regional program manager as we're always happy to help. Thanks for watching, have a great day and see you in the next video.